Thanks for tuning in to episode two. All you all out there who have tuned in, appreciate it. And today we're going to be discussing what the health, which is what the, the health. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know why I'm putting an American accent on for. It just sounds a bit cooler. Um, yeah, What the Health, the documentary on Netflix that everyone is talking about. It's hot stuff Everybody. right now. Yep. I've had lots of um, clients from back home in the UK because uh, I moved over to Australia about three, four months ago. And I've had clients from back home messaging me, questioning me about certain things uh, when it comes to animal, you know, animal kind of uh, sources uh, and, and basically eating meats and so on and so forth. And also here in Australia, people have been questioning me and uh, asking for my opinion on it. And I'm about to give you guys um, my uh, kind of my side of my point of view, if the you like. Four one one. Hell yeah! Um, what I'll do first is to break this up a bit because uh, my boy Josh here, my uh, fellow producer, he is a vegan. Is that correct? Well, I was. Uh, right now, I'm trying some things out like eggs, just to see how I feel. And I, I wasn't feeling as strong as yeah. I used to be. Yeah. And so I was, I've just been tempering with my diet a touch, but. Um, let's let's say for the podcast sake, sure, why not? Yeah, Even why not? Like okay, label. so you switched over to vegetarians. You having, you having dairy now as well, or is it just the, uh, no, just the uh, eggs well, you brought in the poultry? I have, I have tried, um, I had a little bit of cheese, but it's not yeah. something I've made a habit of. And um, how do you feel? Have you picked up on any kind of markers in terms of how you feel energy-wise or, you know, physique? Uh, well, I was on holiday Digestion even, because... So it's hard to say because I just, I drank so much damn yeah. alcohol. Yeah, I heard. And that's not Heard about your little story. Not Let's not discuss guy. that. Yeah. Um, so I woke up in a different town, but that's not here or there. Yeah. Um, no, gen- generally, I, I think I feel a little bit better when I eat eggs, to be honest. Oh, okay. Um, well, it makes sense because, um, the, you know, the way you train and stuff, you do CrossFit training as well, don't you? Um, that word is, is going to be forbidden from here on out on my podcast. I haven't done CrossFit but, um, <laughs> in a while, though. I, I've done mostly boxing and yeah. just some, uh, some weights. Exactly. But for someone who's, uh, you know, exerting quite a lot of energy and calories, yeah. um, you know, you, you have got to consider. I know we're going to get into this, delve deeper into this, um, because what the health. They've obviously demonized pretty much any kind of um, oh, animal sources. So. Yeah, any, any kind of, um, you know, animal uh, forms of food so my man josh has just switched over to eating eggs and what i was going to say with that is at least then you are getting um because eggs and milk actually have the highest biological value than any other protein um whey proteins up there as well well up there so your body actually the bioavailability and your body's a bit of ability to absorb the proteins from stuff like eggs milk and whey protein is um actually really efficient so uh you're going to definitely you're definitely going to get, um, you know, more kind of nutrients in and the saturated fat and the cholesterol as well, don't forget, uh, are actually important nutrients. Mm. Uh, not like we've been told on this uh, What The Health documentary. It's, um, they've kind of gone back in time almost, I think, in terms of telling us that fat, saturated fat and cholesterol and, um, you know, that, that that that's bad for you. And that's what's caused kind of heart disease and, and all the rest of it, but uh, we all know, anyone who's educated knows that it's actually sugar, and it always has been the high sugar diet, which uh, primarily causes these chronic illnesses, and so on. So, uh, yeah, what the hell? So, let's just give you guys uh, just a quick kind of recap, and explain to you what my stance is. I think, personally, it's it's a little bias, and I think it's been blown out of proportion. If I'm honest, um, the, the documentary there, there are there is some truth in it, and there are some some facts in there which uh, which do make sense. But um, that would literally be five ten percent, and that isn't the five percent five to ten percent of the actual documentary. I would say is facts, and they on uh, when I say facts, they're kind of just stating the obvious, if you ask me. However. Um, <laughs> Yeah, with the, I mean, I, the way I look at it is, is with the right amount of funding, okay, and let's say with the right network of people, anyone can can go ahead and, and create a documentary and actually, they can actually produce a, um, you know, like a strong argument to defend their case. Um, and that's, that's pretty easy to do when you've got the right contacts, the right resources, the right funding. Mm. You know, anyone can do that. And this day and age with technology and put it out there, and put it and illustrate and and kind of publish in a, it in a way where it's gonna pull on people's heartstrings and emotions and be effective. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you, it's just like any science. If you go out trying to uh, prove a point, you're gonna prove it. You're gonna find a way to prove mm. it. You're gonna find those facts that you want to focus on. Um, For sure. 
if if you go out there asking questions and trying to find something uh trying to tr- trying to find answers uh, right. then you're going to f- you know find all sorts of answers whether you like them or not right even if you know for example when you go online if you go on google you could type anything into google um you're going to find whatever you want to find on there yeah. you know it's not hard so people kind of you know including myself i've done it in the past where we actually brainwash ourselves sometimes because we're saturated with uh, a lot of information online and stuff which uh, isn't necessarily correct and based on conclusive studies so yeah going back into what the health i mean um you know the producers and experts who deliver the content i mean it's quite clear to us that they have a you know like they have a very firm stance on not eating animals which i firstly i respect and i feel compassion for those people and i feel compassion for the animals if i'm honest you know it is not something which is uh, pleasant and which is something that is you know it's um it's a sad state of affairs really in the manner and the manner and the way some of these animals um, are killed and stuff. And yeah, I completely respect anyone uh, who is on a vegan diet or vegetarian diet for that matter because we all have our own moral point of view and beliefs and each to their own. However, I think it's been delivered in a way where they have kind of, they've used a lot of political stuff in there as well, mm. which I think is uh, it's very clever. Um, it's tapping into people's emotions. And I think, I, I mean, from what I've heard from 100%. people, people who've watched it, it's completely shifted their paradigm. You know, it's completely yeah. transformed the way they think about uh, eating animal proteins, which um, yeah. it's not always a good thing. Obviously, there's good and bad to be taken out of it. But um, what, what's your take on mm. that, Josh, on uh, the way they delivered it? Well, yeah, it kind of, so what it did for a lot of people is opened up their eyes completely. So some of the stuff, I guess, you already knew because, you know, you follow this and this is what you do. Mm. Uh, other people, you know, your everyday person, they don't know half this shit. So when they see it all presented in its glory like this, it's just, it's, it's, it's a shock to them. And they, they, there's, there's two things. They feel like, they feel, how could I have not known any of this? Mm. You know, the carcinogens and the meat and what, whatnot, mm. which, which is true. Yeah, of to course. A, to We've been effect. told this for a long time. There's nothing new, though, is it? Yeah. <clears throat> um, but it is, but it is new for some people. That's it is new for some people, but like it's, 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 yeah, it is new because it's been brought to light for them. I see what you mean, but it's, it's information we've had for a and, while. And, and then, the, the, so what? What's happening with a lot of people is they, 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 end up, they also feel really guilty, and so they're kind of eating this way because they feel guilty, and and it's kind of like it's almost become a fad now. Miley mm. Cyrus, Neo, and all these famous people posting about yeah. it. And, uh, and suddenly, um, um, you know, it's, it's just kind of taken off because oh, it's for like, sure oh, that's cool, just going to that, that, yeah, that's just going to escalate uh, escalate the. Uh, I mean, Netflix. Let's look at Netflix for example. You know, multi billion pound company, uh, very very powerful dollars uh, presence. Dollars. We're in Australia okay, now, yeah, mate. Dollars actually. Mate, yeah, sorry, I'm, still, I'm still living in UK times. Uh, yeah, you know, and and if if Netflix are going to broadcast something like this, um, and it's been delivered the way it has, then it is going to definitely, it's going to definitely switch some people over. So that's guaranteed. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> the way I look at it is, is, you know, we're omnivores. It's, it's nothing new uh, to anyone or to people who actually um, know anything about, not even the science so much or the ins and outs um, about evolution, you know. We evolved from eating what was available. And what was available over the past, say, three million years was fruit and veg you know plant proteins plant sources and uh, and the odd animal here and there you know so um science tells us sorry not science history tells us and uh, evidence and studies tell us that we would eat a, prim- a diet, diet diet primarily um rich in uh, fruit and veg and small amounts of meat here and there whenever we were to get a chance to catch an animal and when we would eat that meat we would get a hell of a lot of nutrients from it because there's a lot of a lot of fats and different types of nutrients in meat, which would be, ben- you can imagine, would be very beneficial to us at times where there wasn't a great deal of food available. Mm. So um, this day and age, though, is completely different. If you're a vegan, I think if you're a vegan in this day and age, then it's a hell of a lot easier. Obviously, back in the day, if you were, you, you couldn't choose, you know, yeah. two, two million years ago. There wasn't such a variety just sitting there at the store. Exactly. You had to go pick it out of the tree. Or... Exactly. It wasn't a case of choice or, yeah. you know, moral, you know, you know, beliefs and all that kind of stuff. Like, if you wanted to be a vegan, I mean, it didn't really work like that. It was like, you'll eat whatever's available. So I think back then, they would have built up a serious nutrient deficiency 
and died in a, in a in a short amount of time really if they if they chose not to eat meat mm. this day and age you know there's a lot of uh good organic food available and a wide range of of uh, very very nutrient dense plant based foods out there for you to uh for you to choose from so the era we live in now yes i think you can you can um sustain a healthy life on a vegan diet but there's a lot of individual variances from person to person <clears throat> so i think if you feel good and you feel healthy and you're happy on a vegan diet or vegetarian diet then go for it you know there's nothing wrong with that however i do want to just quickly um skim over what i've gathered in terms of the nutrients that you will miss out on and the fact that you should take some supplementation especially when it comes to b12 now a lot of people may or may not have heard of uh the, the vitamin b12 uh this particular vitamin which you will find primarily in animal uh, animal food sources uh, such as red meat you'll get a high dose in red meat or animal offal or shellfish you know so like livers you know i don't, don't mean sorry, sorry if you vegans are vegetarians this is quite brutal but you will find in, in animal organs and or animal offal whatever you want to call it like hearts livers kidneys you'll find a rich amount of uh, b12 and also in like shellfish you know in, in that kind of food um, but just generally in meat you'll find a high dose of b12 which actually produces a type of iron called myelin which in turn uh, synthesizes serotonin. So B12 is actually known, well, they call it a brain food. So it's responsible for um, keeping a healthy nervous system and um, keeping your brain functioning at a good level. So it's very important. Now, can you take supplementation of uh, B12 or supplements of B12? Absolutely. Uh, will it which be is a, what I do. Which is what mm. you do, yeah. Um, I'm always a firm believer and just from what I've actually learned myself uh, from different scientists and doctors or whatever that nothing is the same as whole food you know nothing nothing will be yeah, your body will never break something down like it will yeah. whole foods however if you can get a good quality supplement of B12 um, then go for it because you definitely need to I mean a lot of a lot of vegetarians and vegans actually vegans um, let's, let's talk about vegans because obviously that's more extreme where they're not having any uh, animal proteins whatsoever um, they can actually get enough they can get enough B12 in them to sustain a healthy nervous system and immune system, right? Which is the most important part. However, um, it's not optimal. It's not optimal. And without supplementation, they're still at risk of heart disease and women um, apparently is a really high risk of uh, pregnancy complications as well if they're not getting supplementation B12. The, the other thing worth noting though is that uh, gen, the general public meat eaters are also d um, deficient in, in B12, quite, quite a few. So mm. it's probably worth, whether you're, Vegan or not, just getting everything checked every once in a while. Oh, definitely, yeah. So you know, like, with because you, you hear about people like, you know, I had a friend just went and got his blood done because he's trying to have a baby and he found out his whole body was haywire. Mm. But he wouldn't have known if he wasn't, if his missus didn't tell him he had to because they need a baby. So I'd say it's worth always getting checked because, mm -hmm. you know, you could be deficient in something because you don't like a particular type of food, mm. right? Oh, absolutely. B12 yeah. is, is a big one these days because Definitely. we wash everything. Oh, for sure, yeah. It's a bacteria. That's it. That's right. It's a bacteria. So it's, it's a microorganism. So mm -hmm. the only way you can actually get B12 uh, or, or get B12 into your bloodstream is by uh, consuming it from some form of bacteria. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, you can, uh, vegans out there, you can get B12 from other sources other than animal proteins, but you're not going to get anywhere near the dose you need. Um, but yeah, like fortified foods, um, fortified soy and uh, fortified almond milk, stuff like that. So, Essentially, uh, you would would you call fortified processed? Because essentially, so. it is going yeah. through. Yeah. So I mean, that's the way I look at it. It's not a whole. It's not a whole food way of of getting it in your body. However, you're still going to get it in. But yeah, supplementation on B12 definitely vegans out there. So make sure of that. And uh, like Josh said, uh, it it definitely is worth getting checked. Your blood's checked and getting uh, everything in working order and checked up regular, just to make sure. Uh, and then we, and then vitamin D as well. Now, obviously, vitamin D is um, we primarily the, the best source of vitamin D is from sunlight. Mm. So, um, what ten, 10 minutes a day they say is what we need, right? To, yeah, but it depends on the person. It depends on the genetic heritage of the person. Yeah. It also depends on um, you know where they live, what kind of climate they're surrounded they're surrounded by. So, say for example, I think I think um, I don't want to go too much into the uh, the, the the exact amount because I don't want to bore people. Because, but anyway, yeah. In terms of international units, I use, I think, like someone who gets um, decent sun exposure, like we live here in Australia, we're going to get a decent amount. So they say someone like me or you should make sure we're having like around about 2,000 IUs 
uh, a day to get the right amount of nanograms um, per milligram of blood. So about 2,000 IUs we would need to consume from food or supplements each mm. day. Because I'm just I'm just saying for argument's sake here we we may we may get around about 2,000 IUs from the sun because we get obviously um, a lot of sunshine in Australia. Uh, but people who live in colder countries who don't get as much sun exposure then they would normally need to take in around about uh, 4,000 IUs, if I, if I remember rightly. However, these are all really, um, they're not specific to the person, so this is just a rough kind of, a rough number I'm throwing out there. But yeah, obviously it depends where, where you're located on the planet. And um, yeah, with, with uh, vitamin D, you get it from the sun primarily, and um, it's not as bioavailable from food. So even if you get good quality like meats and stuff, which is the highest dose, and obviously uh, primarily fish, ocean fish, uh, vitamin D from ocean fish. You're not; it's not going to be as bioavailable. So you're probably going to be; it's probably going to be about sixty percent bioavailable. And by that, I mean your body's only going to absorb about sixty percent of it uh, from foods. Um, just to put again, just to put an average number out there. But from sunlight, you're going to get one hundred percent bioavailability so that's the best way to get it in however it does damage your dna having it from the sun as we all know too much sun exposure is not good for the body so just so gotta find that middle ground there. find that middle ground but yeah going back to vegetarians and vegans vitamin d obviously they can get um they can get cod liver oil they can get fish oils and um they can get vitamin d from um from plant sources as well i think get vitamin d2 from mushrooms um from different types of mushrooms and they can get d3 if i believe um Oh, actually, D3, they can get... Uh, do you know what? Off the top of the head, I can't think what else other than uh, ocean fish. I mean, ocean fish, one way or another, or fish oils you need to consume. So without delving too deep into it, get some fish oils, cod liver oil, ideally, and that's, that's going to get... best for you in the world, isn't it? Definitely. Cod, cod liver oil. 100%, yeah. yeah. It's, again, it goes back to animal offal, doesn't it? Livers. Yeah. You know, like I said earlier with the uh, B12, you know, this is normally the most nutritious the most nutrient dense foods out there really shellfish and stuff and uh, did, did you ever see the poster that Rhonda Pet Dr. Rhonda Patrick made for vitamin D no but okay. I did listen to a podcast I'll send that to you and chuck it up and it's, really it, it's crazy because it's basically one big poster which has has a list of everything vitamin D does mm. and and what's well, going to happen to you if you don't get enough like you're going to have have an early death basically yeah I know that's exactly it um, and she was saying a sweet spot listen I don't want to go too much into the numbers actually because it's just going to confuse matters however with vitamin it's interesting she said with vitamin D2 which you, you would get from like mushrooms and, and certain types of plant um, sources if I remember rightly but, you, but, but D2 is not um, as muscle sparing so it doesn't have it can actually have a negative effect on muscles so for all you guys and girls out there looking to build muscle and stuff the vitamin as far as food sources go vitamin d3 is is the most important for you know for muscle growth and, and synthesis uh, of proteins and stuff so vitamin d3 for meat um is obviously going to be the most effective from from ocean fish so salmon mackerel herring um you know uh, ideally atlantic mackerel i think yeah it's better because it's less toxic um, I wanted to mention that as well. They, this is what they said on uh, what they're going back to what the health. I'm going off on a bit of a tangent yeah, we're, here. We're back. We're back. We're yeah. back. Back in the room. Um, back to the future. Back to the future. Uh, back to what the health. Um, how going into the fish now. Whilst we're on the topic, they were explaining. Uh, they obviously were saying that fish is really bad for you. And uh, what did they compare it to? Like cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, like five cigarettes. Five cigarettes, cigarettes or or something. Something. Yeah. I mean, come on. We all know. Everyone knows fish is good for you. You know, obviously, I can see in certain Everyone fish. Knows you're cigarettes get... are good for you as well. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I they're really saying good cigarettes you. are bad. I know that's bang out of order. Um, but yeah, we all know you're going to get omega three fatty acids and some omega six and all the essential fatty acids, uh, which are uh, really important for the body. Not to mention other nutrients you get from fish as well. So we all know, um, providing you're not getting fish, which is high up on the. Uh, on the food chain, like I, I mean, not many of you out there are eating shark on a regular basis, I guess. Um, it, it's, it's it's common sense, really. Food or fish which are higher up in the food chain, such as sharks, uh, even swordfish as well, is quite high up there. And those kind of those kind of um, fishes, fishes, those kind of fishies, they say, <laughs> those kind of fishies are going to be more toxic. They're going to contain more mercury, more arsenic uh, properties. So, um, salmon, mackerel, tuna, these kind of fishes they're not going to have um, the toxins that the ones higher up in the food chain are going to have. So it's nothing to worry about. Eat your fish if you're not a vegetarian or vegan. Don't let them get into your head. Um, yeah, so that was that was interesting about the fish. And then they were talking obviously about how, obviously how bad meat was and 
how um, you know we shouldn't eat any types of meat whatsoever, and how the cholesterol. It was like. It was it was quite frustrating watching that really because it's like we're we're, we're trying to tell people now because the science has always been since since uh, the corruption back in 1967 when Harvard University were actually paid there was three students paid I think it was something like um, I think it was like fifty thousand dollars to lie basically and say that sugar was um, mm. was good and fat was causing the problems uh, and cholesterol fat and cholesterol so cholesterol by the way is actually um, it's actually essential. We do produce it in the body without food, and it transports fatty acids. It transports um, nutrients around the body. It also helps fight uh, fight infections. It has its its benefits. So they they didn't mention any of this, and this is what I meant by bias. A lot of the stuff on there was just one sided, and the studies also, when it comes to the studies they were talking about, it's like well, they said not to eat any dairy products whatsoever. Um, because of the because it can cause different types of cancer as well. Mm. That was another thing, wasn't it? Um, and it's like, well, no, because it's anything which is low fat um, is what causes problems, right? Because it's processed and it's hydrogenated. Hi, yeah. yeah. So when people are buying, which a lot of people are brainwashing to doing, by the way, buying low fat dairy products, then it's going to be more processed and you're going to be a, a, a lot more risk of those type of things. If you're getting organic, good quality, full fat dairy and you don't have an intolerance then no it's not going to trigger off any kind of any kind of um cancers obviously it's, you can have a less risk but there's so many factors which come into it lifestyle so and, many factors so many factors there you go. Isn't it? when you, you know? said intolerance there's there, there, there's there's so many intolerant people as well though like mm. i i can't eat dairy like i just i'm the same like, as well I, it, it flares up like an asthma which only came on like later in life so yeah lactose that kind of thing like, it's the sugar in it the sugar you yeah. find in like milk just oh, that just destroys me i, I used milk, to drink it when i was like, younger though a lot of it done like i'm yeah. just like it's like i don't feel good that's <laughs> it just glued to the toilet <laughs> like, for the rest of it. no not not so much <sighs> I, I have problems breathing with certain foods which yeah. i find weird yeah i have a little bit of organic cheese <clears> here and there but that's normally like feta cheese or something uh so it doesn't come from a cow um but, you, you got to figure out what what works for you, right? For sure. So like th- we're all different, and exactly. we all come from different ancestors, different cultures. Definitely, where our genes have got used to, well, our ge- we've evolved to to like to to um, react this way to that, react this way to, to uh, that. Hundred percent. And and I want to mention to the guys and the girls out there who are looking to build muscle, you know, and uh, and and produce some good aesthetics. Saturated fat, right, is um, it's been there's studies to prove this as well, um, and and cholesterol, which you'll find in different types of meats, um, such as you know red meat. Ideally, get grass-fed meat, get good quality meat. Been proven to um, you know increase testosterone levels and and play a big part in the role of hormones in the body, um, and it's going to get you better results in the gym essentially. Um, so next to you know next to actually lifting weights. Um, you know, which is going to be the best thing to increase your testosterone levels and, and obviously uh, get your body in an anabolic state, which essentially means, you know, you're in a fat burning state and your metabolism is elevated and you're in a muscle building state. Yeah, saturated fat and cholesterol are actually going to play a big part in that. And um, there's different types of um, of cholesterol, as we all know. LDL, we've been, t- we've been, again, that's something that's been demonized altogether. So there's two types of cholesterol, HDL, which is the uh, high density lipoproteins, is um, actually that has a lot of health benefits. Uh, it can have detrimental effects if you have too much of it, though, just like anything else. Um, but then there's the bad type of cholesterol, which is LDL. However, there's not not all of LDL is bad. So like the small dense particles LDL is the is is the bad um, is the bad part of that of the LDL. The small dense particles. So certain parts of the LDL, the uh, the other particles, are actually really important for for health benefits and for uh, for, for numerous different um, things. And what they found is um, stuff they didn't mention is like um, heart disease and these chronic illnesses are normally people who are just unhealthy people. They're overweight. They're combining certain types of fat with refined sugar. Now, going back to sugar. And a sedentary lifestyle. And a sedentary lifestyle and all these different things. But when you combine certain types of like, you know, rubbish, let's just go into like the foods which we like to have as treats, you know, like ice cream, cakes, all these kind of things. Think about it. It's a combination of fat and sugar, right? That's mm-hmm. where you get the taste and the hip from. Yeah, now, how many people on the w- in the world are addicted to this kind of food? There's, there's millions, right? It's, it's an epidemic Most. right now. Most, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, including myself. <laughs> no, nah, I'm not. Like, I mean, I still have... Every now and then I'll have like, you know, I'll, I'll have a cheat, a cheat meal if you like, and then I'll just go out of control and I'll, I'll, 
as soon as I have like a bit of ice cream, it's like I'm chasing it, you know. So I still have that, you know. I'm chasing still, the dragon. Chasing the dragon. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> I'm telling you, a good one. That was sharp for you, Josh. That yeah, was good work. Thank you. I um, thought about it for a while. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. Um, I saved that one from last week when I saw you eating that cake. Ah, you liar. No, but I'm just trying to build up a perfectly healthy relationship. <laughs> Build up a perfectly healthy relationship with food is, um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a daily battle. But, you know, my relationship has improved loads and it is by the day. But, yeah, these foods taste good. Uh, but people abuse them and they're having a mixture of saturated fat or that type of bad cholesterol I was talking about combined with refined sugar on a regular basis. they got a sedentary lifestyle. You know, um, they're not really generally looking after their bodies. So um, it's all these factors which come into it. Um, so the studies... <clears throat> the studies they were actually talking about, um, they, they, they weren't conclusive, if you ask me. So, I, I guess with, with like you and myself, like who, who focus a lot on nutrition and try to listen to a lot, like learn from like guys like Mind Pump Media, uh, Joe Rogan's podcast, mm. and then you go Ronda on to Patrick. Dr. Rhonda Patrick because yeah. of that, then you've got that um, Dom D'Agostino. Exactly, Ben people Greenfield. Like, people like that. And so when you, when you hear all these different opinions... Mm. And they contradict what you're hearing on this sure. one doco. And you respect these people because you know they're scientists that study it full time. And you know that they uh, are looking out for everyone's good. and that They've got no um, agenda, right? Mm. So that makes that makes you look at the documentary like, well, okay, so you guys must have had an agenda. Mm. As, I mean, people are going to feel better if they eat a vegan diet, first of all, you generally because they usually eat so shit. Mm. But someone like you, if you went to a vegan diet, you're probably not going to, you're definitely not going to feel better. Like, no. right, someone who trains and eats well anyway for sure yeah I wouldn't think so because um, mm. you know I'm going to be missing out on a lot of the nutrients I'm not getting the, the, the best type of proteins Visual in my body gains. which is the gains yeah mm. and you know the, the proteins which you get from animal proteins are more bioavailable which essentially means you know your body is going to absorb them a hell of a lot better and in fact it's just a different ball game all, all together your body just um, absorbs them completely differently so um, yeah it's not it's not something I would like to uh to, to jump into a vegan with diet. all the diets out there right now though if you had to pick someone who you could say have a listen to this person mm. who would it be who's the number one diet i don't even like that word diet now um because it's just like lifestyle yeah lifestyle yeah lifestyle so, advice okay so Food just healthy mouth. healthy lifestyle yeah so people who promote a healthy living is that what you yeah mean? Who, who could I, who could i shout out who do i look who, up who to? would who would be your number one go-to my number one go-to um you know what? It will most likely be um, Ben Greenfield. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The guy is just a machine. I mean, everything. The th- I don't. Even, I, I don't even know where to start. But I mean, when it comes to health, this guy is on another level. He everything he does and sorts after is based on um, you know longevity, health, feeling good, and he's always doing different things like crazy stuff. But you know, the human body thrives on novelty. So it, you know, the, all these different things and different ways of. Um, you know, manipulating um, food and fasting and all this kind of stuff he kind of um, talks about is just um, it's genius, to be honest. And the guy is always learning, always ahead of the game. So, yeah, Ben Greenfield is a big um, a big inspiration for me, really. So, um, yeah, just what else did I want? Yeah, well, I just wanted to say as well, because I, I know this is uh, talking about being one-sided and biased, um, you know. I don't want to sound like I'm, uh, you know, I'm a massive, like, it sounds like I'm some sort of meat addict or something. But all I'm trying to, um, the message I'm trying to get across is balance is key in life. I mean, I, uh, that's another word I struggle to use because um, what is balance? I mean, having certain things, um, if you're having um, certain things and you're having a lot of them, um, you know what? They could be detrimental to your health. You don't need me to tell you that. So everything in moderation. So eat some, you know, um, an ideal an ideal kind of diet or way of eating would be to eat plenty of veg, right? I'm going to say that. I'm, going to, I'm not going to, because I eat a lot of veg, and over the last year or two since I've increased my um, vegetable intake, um, it's literally changed my life. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, but the way I feel and my skin and uh, my energy levels and my performance in the gym, just from increasing my veg and having more variety has changed the game for me. So I do want to preach and um, get you guys to eat as much veg as you can. So plenty of veg, Eat some fruits. Um, my personal opinion, like berries or mixed berries, are probably gram for gram the best, uh, most nutrient dense fruit um, because they, they're quite really low calories as well. So uh, that's just an example, though. Um, there's so many different benefits from different types of fruit. So little amount of fruits, um, and um, if you're gonna eat meat like I do, um, don't overdo that either. You know, it's just common sense. Um, get some grass-fed 
good quality grass fed meats um you know where you know the sources and they're trusted sources so grass fed organic meats so you know that animal because obviously we consume as they say on the what the health which um there's a bit of truth in this uh no shit what they consume we consume so um if they're consuming corn which by the way um if the if the animal is consuming like wheat based products that's one thing but these wheat based products like corn are sprayed with pesticides um which have been they're linking to different types of cancer uh highly um increases the est- a certain type of estrogen in the body so um avoid um i would try and stick to grass fed um grass fed animals and that's pretty much it really in a nutshell I'll drink plenty of water and yeah just keep a balance it's like anything you do too much of anything you overdo in life is obviously it could have detrimental effects on your health so it's just common sense you don't need me to tell you that moderation and uh just the human body thrives on variety that's how we evolved so don't you know don't do anything drastic and and that's it in a nutshell really Anything you got to say, mate, on the uh, on the vegan stance? <laughs> stop stop the veg- labeling me, please. Ashley. You're a vegetarian now, uh, and you're um, not. You're not. You're a part time like, part timer. If if you're gonna watch a documentary like What the Hell, which is so biased and has an agenda, even though I support some of the things they say, watch a rebuttal. Watch watch something else that doesn't have an agenda, just so you're not a blind sheep going, okay, I'm gonna follow this because mm. it's the new trend. I just saw it. Uh, this famous person does it. So um, always always look at both sides and. And don't be rash to jump to any decisions, really. Exactly. But, but it doesn't hurt to not kill animals. For Let's sure. Uh, go over to my Instagram, folks, guys and girls. At My Instagram handle is at Martin Silver Fitness. Head straight over there. Give me a follow. Stay tuned. My, <laughs> my man's just eating a burger next to me now. It looks beautiful as well. Can't lie. Um, yeah, so go over to my Instagram. Give me a follow on there, at Martin Silver Fitness. Please go subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, which is also Martin Silva Fitness. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast. And if you can, it would be a massive help. Leave a review, um, a good one preferably. And um, I'm trying to build up this podcast now. There's only episode two. So, um, yeah, it's early days, but go give me, uh, go subscribe to that. And, um, yeah, give me a good review if possible. And over and out. Peace. Word. <laughs>